Why did people carve the rocks, you know what I mean, and put the president's faces on there, you know, Mount Rushmore? Why did they do that? They got a big kick out of doing big faces, or did they want it to leave a mark? They wanted to leave a mark. They said, these people right here, they are our founding fathers. So we're going to put their big faces on this mountain and fuck who don't like it. So the fucker got up there and started chiseling out his fucking nose and the eyes and all that shit. Who gave him permission to mark that shit up? You know what I mean? Maybe the Indians had a problem with him putting that fool's face on the mountain. How come he didn't get arrested? Ain't no different, man. That ain't your fucking mountain that you scribed that name on. It's not really like a, an addiction, but more like a sickness. You cannot control yourself once you start, if you really understand what you're doing. The minute you get that first tag, you feel like, I could have done that better, and you got to keep moving. The repetitiveness of it gets really... Hi, I'm Moose, I'm from England. I'm a, a green artist, if you like. I create pictures using pollution as my medium. Um, I'm here in Munich to recreate four images of the latest um, environmentally sound versions of cars. The process I used is, is called lots of things. Um, I like to call it grime writing. Other people call it reverse graffiti. Um, you could call it clean art. This process is uh, as much about cleaning and as showing people how dirty the world is. What I do and other people who do this uh, do is we remove layers of grime or we remove layers um, that have become redundant in society, so an old, an old poster that's out of date is litter, and so it's fair game for us. On this occasion, we're using uh, wooden stencils and high-pressure water and we're cleaning over the stencils where there are holes or apertures where we've cut other areas that get cleaned. So when we take the stencil away, the, the selected areas will create an image. thing is finding a wall that doesn't have graffiti on it um, and, and then the other hard thing is to find a wall amazingly where people will give you permission to clean their wall. We struggle all the time to find people who, who will allow us to clean their wall which is, is as crazy as it sounds. I mean you, you're offering to clean somebody's wall and they don't want you to because they like how the dirt is on their wall I, I guess. I don't know.
Rift were valued. So how did this happen? Shortly after World War II, these guys were figuring out how to ramp up the economy. Retailing analyst Victor LeBeau articulated the solution that's become the norm for the whole system. He said, our enormously productive economy demands that we make consumption our way of life, that we convert the buying and use of goods into rituals, that we seek our spiritual satisfaction, our ego satisfaction in consumption. We need things consumed, burned up, replaced, and discarded at an ever-accelerating rate. Advertisements and media in general plays a big role in this. Each of us in the U.S. is targeted with over 3,000 advertisements a day. We see more advertisements in one year than people 50 years ago saw in a lifetime. And if you think about it, what's the point of an ad except to make us unhappy with what we have? So 3,000 times a day, we're told our hair is wrong, our skin is wrong, our clothes are wrong, our furniture is wrong, our car is wrong. We are wrong, but it can all be made right if we just go shopping. So we're in this ridiculous situation where we go to work, maybe two jobs even, and we come home and we're exhausted. So we plop down on our new couch and watch TV, and the commercials tell us, you suck. So you gotta go to the mall to buy something to feel better, and then you gotta go to work more to pay for the stuff you just bought. So you come home and you're more tired, so you sit down and you watch more TV, and it tells you to go to the mall again, and we're on this crazy work, watch, spend treadmill, and we could just stop. Let's play Name That Leaf. What's this one? He says it's an oak leaf. It's a field maple, that's okay. I'm a big fan of trees, I don't know if you can tell. But we're not going to the forest today. We're going to Toys R Us, guys. You're gonna get to play with all the toys, and you're gonna get to choose any toy that you want. Welcome to the world's greatest toy store. I'm about to cry. This is my best toy ever. This is so cool.